our brother was, you know, that brother through the years, speaking of Brother Taga and his diplomatic response um, to the Rastafari community on the passing of of the Nyabingi elder, um, Bongo or Congo Rocky, of the tabernacle, the Shashimani tabernacle. Um, so the the brethren uh, Rastagas had informed us from Ethiopia, from the gates of Sion, that another brother was going to go to the another brother was going to go to the um, I think Ras uh, is it the Saint Michael's or one of the churches, and see whether um, Congo Rocky, the Rastafari, uh, the Nyabingi elder who has passed away. Uh, what, the 15th? The 15th, he turned 81, and therefore being 81, that was, that's the same age as the age that His Imperial Majesty had disappeared from the throne. Um, in 1975. So it's kind of interesting there, and there's something that can be said about that, you know, perhaps at an, another time, a, a, a better time. But it's to even inform our brothers and sisters about the latest events in Ethiopia as we have received news of it. And it's the passing of the Nyabingi elder, um, the keeper of the Shashamani Tabernacle, uh, Bongo Raki or Congo Raki, Brother Raki, has passed away at the age of 81 on September 15th. Uh, 2010, his Earth Strong, his birthday was uh, September 12th, so he had just turned 81 when he passed away. The information that we had received just a couple, of, just a day or two ago or so was about medical treatment, and we was lamenting on the fact that um, the rightful works of the Federation has has lagged for so long in the unity that we all need in, in, the, in our divine heritage that we don't have medical, the medical units established and the overall, that's just one aspect, medical units is very important, that, that's, that, that, that's why they send out medics when soldiers go to war, they have medics that go along with the soldiers as well because it's necessary, but seeing that that's not needed at least for the elder at this point, um, we want to touch a, say a few words, um, and hopefully maybe more in the future. Um, we know that this day was coming, not for that brother, but for just the whole change, the change of the times, you know what I mean, where the elders have done their part, and now another generation must learn from the successes as well as learn from the mistakes of the former generation. So now is not the time to, you know, go into some of the other matters that we discussed, speaking of some of the elders with this particular elder, because there are certain things that, that we do give thanks for, other things that we have made, been more critical of. But at this present time, it's a focus on how the Rastafari community deals with, especially in the land, is dealing with the situation of the passing away or the death of ones and ones of certain Rastas or Rastafari on the land and in the land, that because of this lack of a social structure and social network on the proper level, according to the teaching of His Imperial Majesty, we lack those institutions and those, um, those elements in our own society amongst us as Rastafari that can handle such a situation. So the elder has passed away. Kangaraki, Bangaraki, and ones and ones have to go, Rastafari or Rastafarian, they have to go to now the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and to almost go on, on bending and bowing knee and say, well, could you please, please, please bury our, our elder because Rastaf certain Rastafari have, certain, have, have inherited even from the elders, certain of the elders, um, certain philosophy and opinion that contradicts the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. So when these real world, these reality issues, such as 
the passing away of ones and ones, and in particular the passing away of this elder, we don't know whether the Ethiopian Orthodox Church will, you know, will allow it or won't allow it because they've stated before, as Ras Tagas has informed us um, via his communication from Ethiopia, that those who are not baptized and members of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church are not really entitled to receive the services of the church, especially, you know, burial services and so forth and so on. So this is the real issue that we have to address, because there's one brethren that actually had contacted us um, a couple of months, uh, a couple of months ago, and he was curious about, you know, what are, you know, like what's the undertaker situation, like he wanted to go to Ethiopia and to, you know, bring certain skills of, um, of, of the profession of the undertaker. Now, of course, a lot of folks are, are spooked out when they hear that sort of talk. But then when we come to these real-world situations, these real-time situations where elders and others, um, due to whatever the circumstance may be, but pass away, when in a situation of death, you understand, of ones and ones that were living on the land, how are these things handled? And, moreover, since we have moved into a new millennium and a new time and a new generation, how should they and must they be handled according to the teachings of his imperial majesty, according to the doctrine of Christ and his kingly character? That's, that's the real point that we should, you know, discuss and use the passing, in a sense, as a point to announce and to say, may his imperial majesty in the name of Jesus Christos get tachinamit hanatachin, have mercy on Congo Rocky, Mongo Rockies. So, but the situation now concerning the body and what's going to happen to the body when the brother had mentioned in his email, and some of you all probably know this, that when others have passed away, right, they will have to be buried somewhere on the land, like find some corner or some place on the land to bury, you know, the elders and other, other, um, uh, repart trees or repat repatriated ones and ones from the West because the real infrastructure that is based on His Majesty's Bible, that's based on the teaching of His Imperial Majesty, has not even been learned, much less implemented, much less applied. And this is what's very important to us as we also look to the East, the Overseen and seek to come out of Babylon. You know what I'm saying? To come out of this mystery Babylon and we prepare ourselves, our spirits, our, our souls, our hearts and minds and our bodies to cross over, you know what I'm saying? In order to be in that promised land because the land, is a, land has a very important connection, you know what I'm saying? To, 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 to where we're at and where we should be going. Land, you know, the, only, the, the real two wealth in the world, and Brother Rashid had pointed this out in his Blue Monkey Passover video. We've been mentioning that and advising one to check that out. But as he mentioned, the real two uh, wealth, the real wealth in the world, the real legitimate wealth in the world are, are real estate and intellectual, intellectual property. In other words, what you create from your heart and mind and the land. So the land is very important. But the subject matter we want to go into, because we were thinking that it came to us in the Holy Spirit that we should have some sort of a requiem for the elder and to use this as an opportunity to show, based on the teaching of His Imperial Majesty, what should be done when such situations arise. Because such situations, as long as we are on this side of the kingdom, such situations will come up, and, and who knows? who it will be, and what are the proper rites and rituals in mature Rastafari to address death, you understand, based on our Ethiopic roots. And it's very interesting when we really just take the opportunity to study these things, because, you know, I'm thinking about this, reading the email, seeing different ones weigh in, different ones give their condolences, as it were, and, you know, to share, you know, to share their, their feelings on the passing of, of this elder, but the real point that really stands out, and, 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 and that's to be expected at one's will, even I and I self, even if we have been critical about some of the things that have been done or should have been done by the elders from the previous generation, we recognize the kubur, 
the kibr or the honor. You understand? It's still for us to be honorable. Regardless if others are not, we should still be honorable. And as far as we have known the elder, because this, this elder, uh, Bangoraki, and Mama Baby I, years ago, Lion and Judas, had, um, we had, along with the Nyabingi, the Nyabingi house that was on Halsey, 150, 157, something like that, 157 Halsey Street, down the, down the road, so to speak, from where we are at presently, um, we were asked,